15, the culmination of the 1978 campaign, fitting the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Dallas Cowboys in a confrontation that will produce a winner that will, for the first time in the history of the Super Bowl, have won the title three times. We weren't in love with the Steelers, and they didn't like the Cowboys. I think that they were a bit pompous. I mean, it would be great to knock off America's team. Super Bowl 13. The scene is set for what could be the best Super Bowl game ever played. I would just tell myself, wow, this is going to be a great football game. I mean, this is, this is exciting. I mean, and you could feel the energy in the air. It was like, wow. I was confident going into that game. I was also nervous because my worst fears in all of those games is the fear of losing a Super Bowl. There's a delayed blitz, and Bradshaw rolls out, caught and dropped by Thomas Hollywood. It's Hankman! It's Mike Hankman! The momentum of that day was going back and forth, but never stayed with one team enough to dominate. A touchdown for Pittsburgh! 75-yard strike to Johnny Stallworth! Touchdown, Cowboys! Well, we expected a great ball game, and it's been fascinating so far. I'm thinking, man, just stop them. You go back and look at Super Bowls, they won't find a better first half than this one. It was like a heavyweight fight where people were knocking the heck out of one another and nobody could deliver a knockout punch. That game had so many different elements to it. I mean, there were big plays, there was unusual fumbles. You say this, these things just don't happen, they happen. You know, it was kind of a roller coaster there. There were things that were happening in that ball game that you just can't explain. Jackie was all alone and Roger drilled it in there. Oh, bless his heart, he's got to be the sickest man in America. All these plays that made a difference in that game were a matter of inches, fractions of inches. I'll tell you, I, I, I'm out of breath because this is some kind of a Super Bowl. It was a phenomenal football game. It was a huge game, but we didn't know it would have the impact and uh, long range ramifications that it did. Up until that time, some of the Super Bowls were lacking. They were very dull, they didn't have a lot of excitement. This game was loaded with it. as Butch Johnson and Larry Brinson drop deep for the Cowboys for what could be the best Super Bowl game ever played. Brinson has it back to the 15. The 20 comes right 25 and is knocked down at the 27-yard line for the Cowboys. Pat Donovan, Herb Scott, John Fitzgerald, Tom Rafferty, Ray Field, Wright, and Billy Joe Dupree. The wide receivers, Drew Pearson and Tony Hill. In the backfield, Tony Dorsett and Robert Newhouse. And the quarterback is Roger Staubach as the Cowboys come to the line on first down 10. Back into the eye with Dorsett the deep back and Drew in motion wide to the left side, rotating Pittsburgh defense. Hand off, Dorsett going to the left, tries to dart outside and does. 30, 35, out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Tony picked up nine. Yeah, we expect him to run that way and to throw that way as well. The big deal for me was the fact that I was a kid growing up in Pittsburgh, uh, right in western Pennsylvania, about 30 minutes from the city. As every other young kid growing up in that area, I always wanted to wear that black and gold. And yet I, then I go to the University of Pittsburgh and I'm part of what they call the City of Champions. Here I am playing against my hometown team in the Super Bowl. So if you're talking about somebody being geeked up and ready to play, I mean, I was, I was, it was, couldn't have been written any better for me. Well, let's set that Pittsburgh front four. Greenwood at left end, Joe Green at left tackle, Steve Furness at right tackle, and John Banasak at right end. The linebackers are Jack Ham, Jack Lambert, and Lawrence Hayes. The quarterbacks, Ron Johnson and Mel Blunt. And the safeties, Donnie Schell and Mike Wagner. Newhouse to the left side, Dorsett to the right. The handoff, Dorsett, center of the field, so straight up to the 50 and down at the Pittsburgh 47. Tony picks up a bundle. Donnie Schell saved a possible six points. Tony Hill wide right on first down 10. Pittsburgh 47-yard line. They are not coming. The handoff in short to Newhouse. Caught and dropped for no gain. L.C. Greenwood made the tackle. It'll be second down 10. High formation, Pearson motion. Pitch out door set, power sweep to the right with Newhouse in front. Tony to the 40, Tony to 35 and out of bounds at the 34 yard line. He's got another Dallas first down. There were a lot of people, a lot of forecasters who said Dallas can't run on Pittsburgh. We really weren't stopping Tony Dorsett on some of these wide plays he was running. Whether it was good execution on their part or some breakdowns on our defense, 
they were picking up some big chunks of change. The way we started off running the football, I just knew, I was like, oh man, this is MVP. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have a big day against my hometown team. Drew Pearson in motion, the only wide receiver. I set behind Staubach, pitch out door set, reverse back, they fumble the ball and Pittsburgh recovers. Now that's gonna hurt, Steelers have great field position. Drew Pearson fumbled the ball when he's attempting to pitch it back. And the Steelers have come up with the football at their own 47-yard line. They were moving the football with Tony running the football, which is the easiest, the easiest thing in football is to hand the doggone thing off. And then they started running some gadget plays, and they got away from it. And I, I was surprised. The Cowboys had moved into Pittsburgh country and were moving the ball almost at will in their opening series. The Steelers at their own 46. Here's Blyer blocking for Franco, running to the right. Cut forward and is nailed at the 45-yard line. Couple of yards lost. Starting lineup for the Steelers. John Cole, Sam Davis, the offensive captain, Mike Webster, Jerry Mullins, the eight-year veteran from Southern Cal. Starting at right tackle will be Ray Penny, the tight end, Randy Grossman, the wide receiver, Johnny Stoller, and Lynn Swan. Rocky Blyer, a running back in his 10th year from Notre Dame. And Franco Harris in his 7th year from Penn State. Quarterbacking Terry Bradshaw, up in that front four. Jones, Larry Cole, Randy White, and Harvey Martin. Henderson, Bruning, and Lewis are the linebackers. Barnes and Kyle on the corners, Waters and Harris are the safety. On a long count, shifting by the Dallas defense. And he gives the ball, runs into trouble at the line of scrimmage, and dives forward to the 47-yard line. You got to start opening up the holes out there. Franco's having his trouble so far. Of course, it's only two plays. Third down and nine. Bradshaw's back there, and he fires under pressure, and it is caught by Stallworth at the Dallas 40-yard line. And the play is blown dead as Stallworth made a great reaching catch. First down and 10 yards to go at the Dallas 40-yard line. Strong left formation, and Bradshaw's back, rolling out to the left, throwing on the move, and it's steered by Stallworth out of bounds. Incomplete. Second down, 10. Hand off to Blyer. Trying to get outside behind the Franco block. He barely turns the corner at the 40. Out of bounds at the Dallas 38-yard line. All right, offense, let's go. Blow him out there. Get him up the middle. Third down and eight. Steelers have the wind behind them. Bradshaw is back. Bradshaw firing and is caught by Grossman at the 28-yard line. Randy Grossman made the catch. He says, okay, Bradshaw, throw me the ball. I'll take whatever kind of a hit that guy can put on me. He catches the ball. He takes the hit. He gets up, and it's a first sign at the Dallas 28-yard line. Bradshaw calling the shots for the Pittsburgh Steelers here in Super Bowl 13. Bradshaw hesitates and then throws deep for Stallworth in the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Johnny Stallworth caught it between two Dallas Cowboys. It was not a typical Bradshaw pass. It was a wobbly pass. It floated, and yet it floated just far enough that John Stallworth was able to beat two Dallas defenders to that ball. Stallworth's score was actually a result of the research done by teammate Lynn Swan leading up to the game. Grabbed a whole bunch of game film from the Cowboys to watch them in this particular situation. And it was a habit. The safeties would read a three-step drop, thinking a three-step drop meant a quick pass. He saw that the, the corners for Dallas seemed to bite on a, what we call an eye cut, which is a four-yard little angle to the inside. And Lynn suggested that we fake that and go deep. Bradshaw pumped, and Kyle did exactly what we expected him to do. He jumped on the eye cut, and I sort of faded to the outside. And Bradshaw lofted the pass, probably too high, and we were able to come up with the catch. We didn't practice it a whole lot. We didn't want people to see it. But it was to me, 42 eye takeoff. If it's 43 eye takeoff, it's to John's side. Bradshaw gets in the huddle during the game. He looks at me, he looks at John, he smiles, and he calls it to John. And John scores a touchdown. It's okay. It's okay. Following the Steelers' score, Cowboys quarterback Roger Staubach was sacked twice during the next drive. Pittsburgh's offense also struggled as Terry Bradshaw threw an interception and fumbled on the Steelers' next two possessions, giving Dallas good field position near the end of the first quarter. Fumble! Cowboys have recovered! Harvey Martin has 
trip might be the kind of a spark that will get the Cowboys going as we move forward the second quarter. Tony Hill wide right on first down 10. Roger Staubach with a long count. Inside give to Newhouse. Robert met up high across the 40 to the 39. 32 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. 7-0 Pittsburgh. Billy Joe Dupree is tight right on second down and nine. Drew Pearson starts in motion, play action. Roger back to throw for Ness chasing. He's going deep for Drew. One on one in the end zone, incomplete. Six seconds to go first quarter, and the Cowboys have a third down and eight, and they go from the shotgun. They're all coming. Roger looks left, fires it out there, crossed by Tony Hill. At the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, touchdown Cowboys! Tony, who's going to be going to the Pro Bowl next week for moves like that, has put the Cowboys on the board. That is the first touchdown the Steelers have allowed in the first quarter all season. And the Cowboys got it on the last play of the first quarter. They like to screw things up and stop the running game on first down, so they like to blitz a lot. Tony made a great move. I was able to get rid of the ball uh, against their blitz. They caught us in a blitz where they had Hill lined up on our strong safety in the slot. And everybody was man on man, and Teal came out and, and eluded Donnie Shell, and my back was turned to the play itself. And I was basically out of the play because I was caught into the blitz, which was man on man on Pearson. It was a big play for him. That's the end of the quarter with our score, the Dallas Cowboys 7 and the Pittsburgh Steelers 7. 7-7 seven, seven, as we enter the second period of Super Bowl 13. Blyer in motion out of the backfield. Bradshaw is back. Firing on the far side and a diving try at the 37-yard line by Grossman. Just a great diving catch by Grossman. Bradshaw to give to Franco. Stutter step gets outside of the left. Pursued out there by Ed Jones and finally forced out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Bradshaw hands it off to Harris, hits up the middle, had the hole, but Jones filled it at the 45-yard line. You could see the hole open. Suddenly, there was too tall Jones. Give to Franco coming off the left side, fights his way up to the 47 and a half yard line for a first down. Franco Harris picks it up, D.D. Lowe's makes the stop. First down and 10 yards to go. Bradshaw would like to pass. He flips it down the middle. And a lot of people there. Looked like he was trying to force that ball in there that time. That could have been trouble. Slot man to the left side. Bradshaw with a play fake. Now rolling right. Gets a good block for protection. And now fires downfield. And it is broken up. He went for Swan on a comebacker at the 30. So the pass is incomplete. It is third and 10. All right, the Steelers. With Bradshaw fumbling the football, picking it up on the move, and he is nailed back behind the point. This ball is taken away from him. Trip for a touchdown. Dallas moves out to a 14-7 lead. The Cowboys have scored twice within three minutes. The terrible towels aren't flying anymore. Bradshaw just couldn't quite hold on to the snap, and what a crunch Thomas and Mike put on him. So I simply got sandwiched ferociously, and one half of the sandwich just took the football off him. Bradshaw has had two fumbles and one interception. He started off pretty well uh, directing that 56-yard touchdown drive, but uh, he's since been ragged. I mean, how embarrassing. If you throw an interception right off the bat, then, you still, then they take a ball out of your hand. Bradshaw's ego wasn't all that was hurting. He apparently injured his shoulder on the play. Or at least that's what his teammates believed. I knew Terry fairly well, and I knew he was hurting for most of the game. I've had some Oscar performances, but sometimes you got to do things like that to spur your teammates. If they think you're really down, they get pissed. And then you get in the huddle and you give the, mm, and you're really not hurting. But they just seem to rise up another level. <laughs> And the word from the bench was that Bradshaw, who of course is right back into the football game, was merely shaken up on that hit. Dealers are at the 20 yard line. Hand off goes to Harris. Off the left side for a couple of yards. 14 to seven in favor of the Cowboys. Checks off, gives the ball to Franco. Franco coming up the middle, comes to the 25 yard line. Bob Bruning and Charlie Waters are there to make the tackle. Third down and five. Slot right formation. 
Bradshaw is back there, and he fires. Top by Stallworth at the 35, breaks the tackle, comes over the 40, the 45. The 50, he's breaking downfield, going to the Dallas 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. A touchdown for Pittsburgh. 75-yard strike to Johnny Stallworth. And you cannot tackle Stallworth lightly. You cannot tackle him sloppy or he's going to be gone. And Aaron Cow did not put the kind of hit on him that was required to bring him down. Consequently, he was off and running was Stallworth. Basically, we played one-on-one -on -one most of the game, you know, which was very tough. Anytime that you're locked up with a caliper of receivers like Stallworth and Swan, you know it's going to be a long day. Their corners were not able to stop uh, Swan and I from catching the football. And uh, if, we could, we could, if Bradshaw could throw and we could run and catch, then we could score. I sort of knew as I turned to catch the football where Kyle was. And so I moved to the inside and, and rocked back to the outside, leaving him on the inside. So I saw an opening between Lynn and the Cowboys that were trailing. It was wide open after that. Our coach always told us, when we were rookies, he told us the difference between a five-yard gain and touchdown might be a receiver's block downfield. So we're downfield blocking. John's running across the field. He's got the good legs. He's, good, he's strong. And, you know, people can't judge his speed extremely well. And boom, next thing you know, he's in the end zone. What a ball game this one's turning out to be, huh? Well, we expected a great ball game, and it's been fascinating so far. Looking back on it, it was like a, like a heavyweight fight where people were knocking the heck out of one another, and nobody could deliver a knockout punch. Steelers fans could feel a shift in momentum after Pittsburgh tied the game on a 75-yard scoring play in the second quarter. The Steel Curtain shut down the Cowboys' offense on the next series by stuffing the run for minus seven yards and forcing a fumble deep in Dallas territory. Joe Green finally broke through to nail Staubach and caused the fumble. Steve Furness had the opportunity, could not corral the football. Doggone it, Steve did have his mitts on that football, but he couldn't quite handle it, but that's all right. White will have to punt from his end zone. Steelers are going to have great field position. The Steelers couldn't capitalize on the favorable field position as a Cowboys sack forced them into a long field goal attempt. A 52-yard field goal attempt for Roy Jarella to break the tie. Jarella's kick is on the way, and it might get there. I don't know. Hit the crossbar. No good. Another foot, and it would have been three. And the Cowboys take over at the 34. Jackie Smith in motion wide to the right side. Handoff goes to Dorsett. Power sweep to the right. Gets a block from Herb Scott. Spilled up at the 39-yard line. Excellent containment by the Pittsburgh defense that time. It's second down, five Cowboys. 4.15 to go first half. And off. Robert Newhouse comes left, tries to get outside. Nothing there. Shoved out of bounds for a loss of one. Yards are coming up for Robert. He's carried six times for minus one yard now. Cowboys will go from the shotgun. Here's the snap for Staubach. Looks right, fires it out for Preston. Diving catch, first down up the 46-yard line. Nice play, old man. Yeah, you got to say there's old man, River. First down, 10. Cowboys. Drew Pearson starts in motion, a fake to Dorsett. Roger back to pass, goes across the middle, passes high, but he'll make the catch. First down, 10. Tear that ball loose and get after their ass. Dorsett in a wing to the left side. Roger may change. Fakes, flips the screen out for Dorsett. He's got it. Looks for a block, comes left to the 40. Down to the 35 and out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Tony doesn't realize he stepped out of bounds, and he sticks the ball in the face of one of the defensive backs, and a flag flies as the fight breaks out at the 25-yard line. Dead ball foul because Dorsett was out of bounds, so the play stands, he's out of bounds at the 26. We have not seen Pittsburgh intimidating Dallas thus far today. Not a bit. So perhaps, at the very least, Raphael Septien will get to try his first Super Bowl field goal. Roger Staubach, play action, back to throw, looks downfield, fires it deep, it's intercepted, picked off by Mel Blood at the 20. 25, comes left to the 30 and is knocked down at the 30-yard line. A flag is down, and the Cowboys may be flagged for the late hit. My reaction was, Roger, why did you throw the ball there? Because if you look at it, I think there's five or six black shirts within 10 yards. It is first down 10 at the 44. Quick pitch to Franco. He breaks the tackle at the 40. 
And down he goes, Flagg. Holding call against the Steelers. The ball is back now at the Steelers, 34. First and 20. Flyer in a close slot position on the right side. A quick flip out to Swanee Farm. A screen is up over the 35 to 40. Leaps over the 45. Breaks the tackle over the 50. The 45 still running to the Dallas 40. And down at the Dallas 37 and a half yard line. Super great running as Charlie Waters feels down there and says, What went by me, man? It looked like a big cow from Texas going by. The Steelers now at the Cowboys 38 yard line. Steelers ready to go. Bradshaw backs up, and he fires again, and there's the leaping catch down at the 16-yard line by Lynn Swan. What a marvelous athlete. I loved it when Dick Enberg referred to him during the playoff games on NBC as the Mikhail Barishnikov of NFL receivers. Boy, he is just that. Ballet-like moves in the air and on the ground, and that was all Lynn Swan. We felt like, okay, the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive machine is hot. It's running. We're ready to go. Clock turns down to 48. Slot right formation. Star within the slot. Bradshaw back. Throwing quickly. Throwing the ball to Franco. And he can't hold it. Incomplete. Oh. Oh. The 16-yard line with 40 seconds remaining to play in the second period. The handoff to Harris. Or rather, Harris galloping over the left side of the line down to the 10. They spin his pins out from under him at the 7.5-yard line. I'll tell you, he burst over that left side and then sort of pirouetted it over Kyle, the right cornerback. He appeared to have enough steam up to make it all the way, but third down and one yard to go. Stalworth goes in short motion. Bradshaw rolling to the right. Thereafter, he throws on the move into the end zone and is caught for a touchdown to Rocky Blair. Would you have expected Rocky Blyer to turn into Nijinsky? It was Nijinsky. Well, then the Nijinsky was a great ballet dancer. For it to be a touchdown, he had to make a great catch. And Rocky, let's be honest with you, you know, he's, uh, he's no swanee. He can't control and spin, but by God, he made that catch. It comes floating in. And it was over my head. And all I can think about is just jumping as high as I can. But when it hit my hands, oh, I knew. That whole play took probably about eight seconds. Rocky has turned that into about 35 minutes of dialogue, a monologue of, uh, in his speeches of how he did, how high he jumped, and, but uh, a great play. If you throw this pass to Rocky Blair 10 times, he's gonna catch it once, okay? And it happened to be in the Super Bowl. I never knew Rocky could jump that high. That was the kind of play that helps you win a tight Super Bowl. Something that they figure you don't normally do, but in this game, you have an opportunity and somebody steps up and makes the play. Great moments happen in great games, uh, or they become great moments when they happen in great games. We have seen some wild and wooly first half. The Steelers leading the Dallas Cowboys 21-14. Uh, to 14. You must go back and look at Super Bowls over the years. They won't find a better first half than this one. I would just tell myself, wow, this is exciting. I mean, and you could feel the energy in the air. It was like, wow, you know, you know, what's, you know I mean, what's going to happen next? Here come the Steelers back. All right. Total offense in the first half, 271 yards for the Steelers, 102 yards for the Cowboys. That'll tell you just a whole lot right there. Raphael Septien will kick off. We've got 30 minutes to go to settle the world championship. Here's the kick, fairly short by Septien. Anderson at the 15 on the run, goes to the 20, 25, to the 30, 35, 40, down at the 39, finally. A dazzling run by Larry Anderson. So here come the Pittsburgh Steelers with good shape once again. At halftime, we analyzed what was going on, and... Uh, and we made a couple adjustments. We were snuffing the uh, life out of the run game. They cannot run against the Cowboys. If they couldn't pass, it'd be all over. Franco finding that Dallas defense tough to penetrate on occasion, most occasions today. We were able to start um, controlling what they were doing. We started to play uh, a few more zones on them, and uh, it kind of controlled them for that third quarter. Equally important was the loss of John Stallworth. Unable to shake off severe leg cramps, Stallworth didn't play a down in the second half, an absence which hamstrung Terry Bradshaw in the passing game. I mean, Stallworth's out of the game. I'm down to Lynn, uh, 
and our that's why in the second half we couldn't do anything. We, our, our my guys were hurt. Red Shaw's back deep. He fires and is a cut. Swallowing with a man on him on a comebacker incomplete. Well, in this uh, third period, the Steelers have not shown anything in the two possessions that they've had the football. It's uh, been compared to the first half, a lackluster third period. When this is all over, I have a feeling we will look back at this current series and describe it as critical. This right here is a biggie. Preston Pearson also in the ball game. Let's look. Here's the snap. Four-man rush. Roger back. Looks deep. Drills it. It's caught for the first down at the 30-yard line. Preston Pearson has the catch. His second of the game. Lambert with the tackle. Smith in motion. Wide left where Drew Pearson is. The handoff, door set, power sweep to the right, cuts back inside the 30 and is spilled at the 28-yard line. Second down, nine, with 5.18 to go, and the Cowboys on the Pittsburgh 29-yard line. Roger Staubach under John Fitzgerald, hands it off to Laidlaw on the delay. Scott comes left, drives down to the 22. It'll be third down, and about two for the first down as Lambert makes the tackle. And now the Cowboys with a big, big third down. Drive. Deja vu. They tried this earlier with Jackie Smith. Andy Frederick and Billy Joe Dupree as tight ends on a third down two and lost a yard. Let's see what they can do now at the Steeler 22-yard line. Split backs behind Starbuck. Door set to the left. Tony gets the handoff. Power sweep right. Front behind the line. Cuts for the 20. Skirts down to the 18-yard line. First down, Cowboys. If you're a Cowboy fan, get up and give a standing ovation to Tom Rafferty and Billy Joe Dupree and Ray Field Wright and Jackie Smith because those were the guys throwing the blocks on the right side. And as they did to begin the game, the Cowboys are now moving the ball on the ground. Ball officially at the 17-yard line. Tony Hill breaks and goes left. Roger Staubach, long count. Finally has it, drops back to throw. Looks across the middle, rolls up. Fires it for Dupree, incomplete. It'll be second and ten. That you just can't get down to the 17 on first down and not score. That's right. You just must get in there. Wide split behind Roger Staubach. The safety blitz is on. Roger hands it off to Tony Dorsett. Breaks to the left of the 10. And he's got it at the 9-yard line. It'll be third down and one. But a good call by the Cowboys and a good, a good dash by Tony. Big down! Big down! Come on, Brent! Some confusion with the play selection, and the Cowboys have used one of their three timeouts. The play was really set up for the goal line, and it was called on the 11-yard line and by mistake. And we didn't have the three tight ends in the game. The clock's running, and it's third down. And so I called timeout, went off the side, and said, hey, coach, uh, this is a goal line play. And he said, oh, yeah, that's right, but we'll run it like a short yardage play. When we called the play, Jackie now is running to the back of the end zone, which is 21 yards or 22 versus 11. Well, what do you call? A first down. How about a run pass option to the right side? Using the three tight ends that you've got and perhaps looking for Jackie Smith. Door set now goes in motion wide across the backfield to the right side. Roger back to throw, has a man open in the end zone. Caught! Touchdown drop! Jumped in the end zone! Jackie Smith all by himself! Oh, bless his heart! He's got to be the sickest man in America. Play action pass was executed perfectly. Uh, the linebackers were completely sold that it was a run. And whoever was responsible for Jackie uh, took the bait <laughs> and was uh, completely committed to the run. Jackie's wide open in the end zone. Whoever was supposed to cover him on that play was not within a block of him. It hit him right in the midsection. He bounced up. Well, I was uh, really qu quite open, more than anybody expected, I think. I still don't think we knew how to cover that. If they would have run that five times around the end zone, I don't, still don't think anybody knew who was supposed to cover Jackie Smith because of how that play developed with the shifting and what they did with the personnel. I mean, we just kind of stood around. And the Cowboys are just converging on him on the bench to say, it's all right, Jack, we'll get, we'll get it back. Septian will try three points. Septian will try to make it 21-17. Here's the snap. Septian's kick is up. He got it. So the Cowboys get something out of this with 2.36 remaining in the third quarter. We still had, we had a quarter to go. We're only four points behind, and Jackie Smith is taking more heat than he deserves. 21-17 in the sense of have you been here before sets in. That was the final score of Super Bowl X. In the third quarter, you would have to say it was dominated by the Cowboys because the Steelers did absolutely zilch on offense. But as we all know, the third quarter's okay, but it's the fourth quarter that counts. 
We come to a vital point in this ball game where the Steelers need desperately to move with the football. 12:09 remaining in the ball game. Larry Bradshaw at his own 14-yard line. Bradshaw, quick pitch to Franco, waiting into the right side of the line and coming inside tackle over the 15 and up to the 16-yard line. Franco has 37, 39 yards now on 18 carries. Well, they're just not running on the Cowboys. Second down and eight. One to the right. T-Bell to the left. Bradshaw's back there. They have a blitz coming at him, and he unloads it to the far side. T-Bell goes down at the 30. Incomplete. They're harassing Bradshaw. He got rid of that ball. That's all he wanted to do, get rid of it. He was 11 of 18 in the first half. In the second half, he is two for nine. This is the third down play. Third and eight. They're coming at him again. And he unloads it. Looks like interference, but it is held on to at the 25-yard line. Big play by Bradshaw, huh? Yep, sure was. First down 10 at the 26th officially, and here come the Steelers. 10-51 remaining in Super Bowl 13. First down at the 25-yard line. Bradshaw drops back again, and now lets it fly, and there's his man up at the 39-yard line. So Swan comes in front of Barnes again on a hook. First down 10. All right, now the Steelers have asked have some field position. As for the fifth time today, a ball is caught in Benny Barnes' territory. The terrible towels are waving across the field. A sea of them as the Steeler crowd comes to life for the first time in this second half. They're poised on defense as Bradshaw calls the signals for the Steelers. Quick pitch to the left side to Franco. Trying to get outside there, and he's tripped up, running to the sideline at the 43-yard line. Pick up four yards, second down six. Cowboys coming with the blitz on every play. Bradshaw's back. Here they all come, and he fires it long, lays it way downfield there. Swan trying to get to the ball, and the flags go down. Swan is tripped up by Benny Barnes. We're looking to make a big play. We try and make a big play down the middle of the field, or on the outside. Terry throws the ball inside. So I'm trying to slow down, cut under Benny Barnes to get to the ball. As I'm trying to cut under him, he, he goes out and stretches out and trips me up. I spotted the ball and it looked like it was just floating, you know, a mile high up in the sky. And then I felt this uh, clip or nudge and then I went down. And before I knew it, I was face down on the ground. And my first thought was, oh my God, where is he? He didn't really try to trip Lynn. But it's probably a good thing he did because Lynn would have scored a touchdown if Lynn hadn't stumbled over him. Now, of course, Benny and Cliff Harris and Charlie Wathers are all yelling, it's incidental contact. It was just, they got tangled up. He didn't trip them. My perspective, and I think most Dallas Cowboy fans, was definitely not uh, pass interference. Benny Barnes was right there, and the official was right on the spot. So it was incomplete, and all of a sudden you see a flag thrown from the middle of the field by Fred Swearingen who was a communist, I heard. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, he, he, trying to defeat America's team. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, but it was a horrible call. I mean, Fred Swearingen had no right to make that call. But he did trip me. I mean, you can't trip. That's the rule. That flag is going to turn out, I have a feeling, to be awfully critical. Yeah, and awfully controversial. First down 10, Pittsburgh at the Cowboy 23-yard line. 9.05 to go. Bradshaw has it. Quick screen out to Swan. He's got blockers in front, shakes a tackle, goes left, shakes another. Buried at the 15-yard line. Yes, that looked good. Bradshaw, 16 of 29 for 299 yards, a Super Bowl record. Blitz is threatened by the Cowboys. Bradshaw hands it off to Franco Harris. The power sweep to the right. Franco is caught on a brilliant defensive play and dragged down at the 19. It'll be third down with 7.59 to go. Bradshaw looks over the Cowboy defense, which is uptight, showing a blitz tendency. He may be changing. Here comes the max blitz. Bradshaw's back. They've got him. Haul him down at the 30-yard line. Thomas Hollywood Henderson. And now, delay of game against... Pittsburgh, and they're not going to let the play stand. Oh. They're going to mark off five yards and give Pittsburgh another shot. How big was that? <laughs> the call was huge, but bigger still was the emotional benefit of a confrontation after the whistle. True to form, Thomas Henderson taunted Terry Bradshaw, but in a rare display of anger, Franco Harris aggressively confronted the Cowboy. There was an altercation between Franco and, and, and Henderson. That's very rare for Franco. I believe it probably excited him a little bit. All the pregame hype about, you know, what he was saying about Terry and and then this particular situation, I'm saying to myself, this is uncalled for. I mean, he's trying to intimidate one of my teammates. So really, I, you know, like I walked up to him and got in his face. I mean, we don't take this lightly, okay? And I just want to let him know that, that uh, uh, 
you know, need to cut this stuff out. Franco's not necessarily a, a demonstrative type of guy, um, uh, and he doesn't necessarily wear his heart on his sleeve, but at that moment in time, he was very demonstrative and very intense. Um, and, and very focused on what he wanted, and somehow he wanted to get back uh, and show Hollywood and um, the Cowboys that those things don't happen. Third down and nine, seven seventeen to play. Larry Bradshaw giving the ball to Franco through the middle, down over the 15 to 10, the five, touchdown Pittsburgh. They opened it up down the middle, and the big guy went straight ahead through the hole. In every direction, and the Steelers go on the board with a TD. Oh, a bad ballot. It's third and long, and uh, Cliff and I uh, had an interesting play set up, defensive play that would have had Terry been able to read what we thought he was going to read. Uh, we would, we were hoping to make a big play out of it. We didn't tell anybody about it except Cliff and I, and. I took his place as far as my run responsibility, and uh, he took my place on run responsibility. And uh, sure enough, Terry did not read the play as we s expected. As I went to make the tackle to fill the hole, I had a bead on Franco, and I was getting ready to make the tackle. And the official just backs into me, and then, uh, and then the lineman wiped me out at that time. Classic Steeler play. Uh... People know that you know we come off the bus trapping, and and I love the trap, and it's you know a, a quick read and go, and just everything lined up right at that time, and as they said, even the ref lined up right at that time. So sometimes you do need some luck, uh, and and timing is everything, and uh, Brad just he made the the right choice and calling the right person at the right time. Terry did not read the play as we expected. Because I asked him the next day, he says, oh, I thought y'all were blitzing. So I audible to a quick trap, and uh, we weren't blitzing. What they say today is uh, that dumbass Bradshaw didn't know what we were doing, and so he did the wrong thing. The worst part about it for them was the next day when they read in the paper that Terry said, uh, I saw Cliff bail out, and so I audible to the run because I knew it was a blitz. And they looked at each other when they saw that in the paper, and they said, a blitz. It was never a blitz. It's a terrible call against a blitz, and it wasn't a blitz. And, and they're, they're still livid about that to this day. I mean, fate, destiny, call it what you want. But I, we've run that play a 100 times, and we wouldn't have called that, that defense on that time, and that official would not have been standing there. And I wouldn't have been running over to that side. It was. Uh, that was a blow to us. Would have stopped that immediately if we'd uh, been in our normal positions. 85 yards, eight plays. Cowboys need two touchdowns in the final seven minutes and 10 seconds to win it. Field goals won't help them now. One of Chuck's uh, adages uh, as, as we went through the year, what he called his truths, was that the, the big play can happen at any time. And on offense or defense or special teams. And, and, and when it happens, don't let it surprise you. In fact, the next play and the next big play were one and the same. The kickoff following Franco Harris's touchdown. Here's Jarella scrubbing the kick down short. Picked up at the 24. Fumble! Ball loose! Still loose! Still fighting for it at the 21. Who has got the football? The Steelers think they have it. So do the officials. Yep, so do the officials. Pittsburgh! Pittsburgh's ball! Holy mackerel! Well, that ain't gonna help anybody do anything. Bless his heart, Randy White was playing on the front wedge on the kickoff, and it was a squib kick. Roy slipped down when he was kicking and didn't mean to kick a squib kick, and comes right to him, and he has to pick the ball up, and he does, but he has a cast on his left hand. And just as he's moving, he moves to the left, and he sees somebody coming, and he's got enough football background to know he's supposed to put the ball away from the defender coming, so he moves it over to his left hand. And it, he couldn't hold on to it because that was his cast, in. Holy mackerel! I don't want to jinx the theaters, but I think that uh, that may be the play that broke the Cowboys' back with 6.58 remaining. Steelers have recovered at the 19, 28-17. It may be all over, and fans are starting to stream out of here with 6.58 remaining. When there is a turnover, there is immediate big play thereafter. All of a sudden, you know, your team is, your team is kind of confused. Maybe the Cowboys all of a sudden, ah, oh, 
let down a little bit. It was like, oh, crap. You know, I mean, we had an opportunity here, and then the defense is back on the field again, and so boom. In the previous 10 seconds, the Steelers had scored a touchdown and recovered a fumble. Sensing that Dallas was dazed, Terry Bradshaw went for it all on first down. Bradshaw is back, and he's going to slide, and Squad makes his quickest catch in the end zone. Unbelievable catch. Holy smoke. 18 yards, and they strike again. Suddenly, the Steelers have two TDs in what? In about nine or ten seconds? I could play in the big games. I mean, I was comfortable in big games. Big games didn't make me nervous. What a brilliant throw by Bradshaw. What a brilliant catch by Swan. It's going to wind up being a score more lopsided than the difference between the two teams. The backs have been broken now. There's no question. The touchdown I scored was essentially the same touchdown that John scored on the first half. 42, I take off. But to the Cowboys' credit, they were not going to be burned twice by the same play. Harris didn't come up. Terry pump faked it. I saw the safety right there. Instead of going to the post, I bent it like an inside seam to the outside. Now there was no help on the outside. Safety tried to jump up. He couldn't get there. It was too high for him. And the ball is just over his fingertips. And just to a point where I could reach it, I make the catch. I'm in the end zone. It's a touchdown. It was my mistake because he faked to Franco enough for me to hesitate just for a moment, a split second, and I turned to make the play, and Terry threw it over my head, and I thought to myself, there's no way that Swan can catch this ball, and he made a great catch. He leaped, I don't know, 12 feet in the air. He went up in the air and made a circus catch. He looked like a flying circus, and the Southern Cal Flyer pulled it in. Once again, you couldn't gun the quick post because of underneath coverage. So I held it a little bit, threw it off my back foot, threw it hard, threw it hard and high. Both my receivers are in the Hall of Fame. And that, and that, and that catch by Lynn was a classic example of why he's in the Hall of Fame. It's erupted here in the fourth quarter, and it's all over now as the stands begin to empty. 35-17, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, barring some combination of about three Hail Mary passes, will become the first team in the history of the NFL to win three Super Bowls. Pittsburgh has been here three times and apparently will win three times. The Cowboys have been five times and have won twice. It was 21-17 and the Cowboys were dominating and all of a sudden you look up at the scoreboard and you're down by 18. 35-17, 6.05 remaining. High formation for the Cowboys. Staubach is back to throw. Roger flips it out for Dorsett. He's to the 10, goes right to the 15, cuts back to the 18-yard line and is filled. Second down and two, Cowboys. Roger has it, drops back to throw. He's not had the greatest day of his career, and he's sacked now at the nine-yard line. Roger's only eight out of 18 for the day. John Banasak got the sack. This will somehow come out as being a, a, a triumph for uh, the blue collars over the white collars. Somehow. Third down, 11 for the Cowboys. Staubach is five yards back in the shotgun. The snap back by Fitzgerald. Rogers back, looks deep, can't find anybody, he'll have to run. Rolls up to the 10, the 15, goes left to the 20, wiggles up to the 25, and has a first down at the 28-yard line. First and 10, Dallas at the 28-yard line, 4.31 remaining in the game. Roger drops back, pumps once, goes in the right flat, looks for Drew Pearson, and Drew makes the catch and is out of bounds at the 45 with another first down. And that kills the clock with 4.22 remaining. Regular set for the Cowboys, first down 10. Staubach has it, draw play, door set. Tony dances right to the 50, still on his feet and struggles left. He's free to the 40, he's to the 35, the 30, and dragged down from behind at the 28-yard line. Vintage Dorset running as he made about three unbelievable moves. Roger from a regular formation. Drew Pearson is in motion, play action. The fake to door set, Roger back. Looks deep for Tony Hill. Can't find him, in trouble. Scrambles left for Dupree. Billy Joe makes the catch and is out of bounds at the 16 with another first down. And that's Billy Joe's first catch of the day. 321 remaining, and the Cowboys have a first down. Here's Roger dancing back, a three-man rush. Roger looks, can't find anybody, rolls right, pulls back to the 28, now drills the ball, and it is caught at the 10-yard line by Drew Pearson. And the Cowboys will hurry now with 258 remaining, and they have a second down and two. Roger drops back, fires it out of the flat for Billy Joe Dupree to the five, and in for the touchdown. Dupree has scored, and it's 35-23 with the extra points to come. Now, we know it's going to be an onside kick. We know exactly what's going to happen. Oh, we're going to get an onside kick, and we're going to be done playing right now. Well, you remember
remember how the last one wound up back in 1975. And now here comes the onside kick. It comes to the left side, and the Steelers drop it, and the Cowboys recover. Dallas has the football at the 49-yard line. Onside kick. We don't get the ball. Dennis Thurman picked it up, and the Cowboys may still be alive. All of a sudden, you're thinking, it's the Cowboys. It's the kids coming back. They're going to make this a great ball game. You know, it's going to have this a surprise ending. One guy on Dallas' team that, uh, in my mind, is always a wild card, and that's Starbuck. They reacted to him in a way that I think defines what the leadership of the quarterback position is supposed to be. He made them better than they were by the force of his personality as much as what he did with his arm and his legs. Second and 10 at the 48. Here's the snap to Staubach. Rolls back, fires it out in the right flat. It's caught by Drew Pearson. First down, spins out of the tackle. He is to the Pittsburgh 32-yard line. And the Cowboys have a first down at the Steelers 30-yard line. And here is the two-minute warning. So Staubach shows his uncanny ability to move a club against the clock. Staubach dances back, a four-man rush. Roger looks deep. He can't find anybody, and is caught. Now struggles to his feet, finally down at the 38-yard line. It'll be fourth at 18, with 52 seconds to go in the ball game. This time they go from the shotgun on fourth and 18. Pitt snaps it back. Here comes the rush. Roger looks deep across the middle for Drew, and Drew makes the catch with a first down at the 13-yard line. Boy, give credit to these guys on offense. They're just wailing away and refusing to give up. They convert a fourth down, 18. Fourth and 18. Well, that was what Roger could do. It, you know, it was very frustrating. We kept firing away, and, and our guys were, I mean, they were open, and I was able to, you know, we made some very good plays. 32 seconds remaining. Roger has it. Blitz is on. Staubach's back. Up in the pocket. Out of the tackle. Fires the ball to the 10. Dorsett has it. Goes to the 5 and tries to get out of bounds and does at the 4-yard line. I'm thinking, man, just stop him. Roger under Fitzgerald once again. Has the snap, drops back two steps, bumps once, goes deep in the end zone, caught touchdown! Butch Johnson makes the touchdown catch. It's 35-31 Pittsburgh with 22 seconds remaining in the onside kick coming up. This is not over yet <laughs> with 22 seconds. Unless the Cowboys can recover the onside kick, it's all over because they do not have enough timeouts left to kill the clock enough times to give them another shot at the ball but wouldn't it be something if they could get the onside kick another onside kick and uh, I'm in the middle and I'll tell you in all honesty my thought is this don't kick it to me <laughs> don't kick it to me they went to the left side last time we'll see what Sepien has in mind this time around now the mission here is to get the ball here they come again now they kick it straight forward and it is recovered by Rocky Blyer old dependable Rocky Blyer what a ball game. What a wind-up. It's all over. And the Steelers have won one of the best games ever played in this title match. Here is Terry taking the snap, falling down on the turf, and the Cowboys are out of timeout. The 1978 season is over. Super Bowl 13, captured by the Pittsburgh Steelers. The first team in the history of the NFL to win it three times. They've just announced that Bradshaw has been named the most valuable player in this game. The goal was to win this one and to become the team of the 70s for a man they admire, Chuck Noll. And a great game for the sellout crowd here at the Orange Bowl. That's the end of Super Bowl 13. The final score, the Steelers 35, the Cowboys 31.